Welcome back, everybody. Kevin here from Watch This with Joe and Kevin going into episode four of the second season of The Sopranos. Um, obviously, the big takeaway for me in the last episode was the arrival of uh, Richie, uh, the brilliant David Proval's uh, mob character who, let's face it, if you're making a mob television show, is there another actor that like comes to mind as like, who should absolutely be on the show at some point, he would be at the top of the list. He is absolutely perfect for this kind of role. Um, he, when he's introduced, he's menacing. Um, he he beats a, a guy up in the episode with running over him with a car. So he is genuinely terrifying. Um, he seemed to have, in the episode, gotten permission from Junior to be a little bit defiant towards Tony. That's why he went and visited him. And Junior didn't overtly, I don't feel like, gave him permission, but he certainly took away, like... You know, I'm still with Junior as I'm still in charge. And so um, Richie was like, well, then that means that Tony's not. So when Tony went and got in his face in that wall scene, and by the way, the the tension, the chemistry between those two guys, um, for, uh, between Proval and, um, ah, I, oh my God, Gandolfini. Well, wake up, man. Um, and that scene was electric. Uh, I, I expect a lot of good stuff between those two moving forward. Um, and, you know, we talk about crazy eyes on actors sometimes, but, I, I, you know, watching that, I'm not sure there's an actor that does crazy eyes quite like David Proval does, because when Tony was kind of chastising him and threatening him a little bit, and he just kind of was, just said, okay, Tony, but, but the eyes said, I'm kind of running through the list in my head of, of what would be an appropriate response and a not appropriate response in terms of the amount of violence that I'm eventually going to rain down here. Um, he seems legitimately dangerous and doesn't seem to really care too much about consequences. Uh, I think, you know, people, you know, Polly said in the episode, he's been in prison for 10 years. He's a little bit mad. He's going to be a little messed up. I think that's fair because it, it really seemed like he is struggling to know what an appropriate reaction would be and not really understanding what an overreaction is. So I'm expecting an overreaction from him moving forward because we kind of got that with, was it Beansy was his name? Um, I also think that there's a possibility that because he's already gone and seen um, both Livia and Janice and they both seem to like him, that they can be complicated factors in what is definitely an impending, uh, I wouldn't say war, maybe, but um, at least tense relationship moving forward. Um, between Richie and Tony. And I'm wondering if they're going to be a complicated factor as well, since both of them seem to kind of like Richie. Um, so I don't know. I guess we'll see, obviously. Uh, I'm excited. I hope he's on the show for a while. Um, as, as confrontational as their last exchange was, he may not be. I, I'm not sure. Uh, we do want to go ahead and welcome all of our uh, Patreon subscribers for being here. I'd like to give a special shout out to Actuarial Lurker, Balas Foldes, Chris, Jeff, Christy Gaverston, NJ, Surya Gundavarapu, and Weird Magic. Thanks a lot, guys. Happy here with us. If you would like to see a full length reaction to this and everything else we've watched or currently watching, please check out the link in the description below to our Patreon page. Every show, including The Sopranos, it's at least four episodes ahead on Patreon of where we are on YouTube. So if you watch the YouTube edits, would like to keep going. Going, you can do it on our Patreon page. You will have to sync and watch along on your own source material. You're only going to see and hear me for copyright purposes, and we are also watching 30 Rock as a Patreon exclusive. Oh, I just noticed they have David Profile in the opening credits here. I wonder if he's going to be around for a while. I'd be okay with that, obviously. <laughs> kind of wondering if the romantic history between him and Janice is going to be a complicating factor, too. Janice just seems like a hand grenade who is going to just mess a lot of stuff up. <laughs> Maybe that's not fair. <laughs> These are the alternate takes, Tom. What, are you going to call Coppola with ideas on how to fix it? So it's a Francis Ford Coppola movie in the 90s. We're watching The Rainmaker. <laughs> when Vito goes back to Sicily. My father, too. Okay. The crickets. Great old house. Could we please lower the air conditioning? I'm doing it for God's sake. I just got this car. <laughs> Take the car! Church Oh no, they lost their dog. Going over the other side. See that friend of ours over there. My car operation. Lose the miserable puss. It's mine now. He's a serious man, Zipatorio. Serious how? You know what I mean. We deal with him to a guy named Furio Junta. He speaks English. Going to Italy, huh? 
calm. It's a business trip. Okay? It is. It's not worth the jet lag. Did I say anything? Tom and Bob, the trip to the Bahamas. I said I didn't have the time. You didn't. It was football season. My football season is just... Oh, put the bookies. Okay. Two cars to a container. And Junior had to get the operation over the hoop, specifically. Uh, Rick Curdo. Oh, man. Sal's gonna get so busted. How's it going, Colonel? How you doing, Jimmy? What I hear, you in Puerto Rico? Jimmy, uh, let me introduce you to a friend of ours. This is Joey from Dover, Delaware. Is he gonna hurt this poor guy? Anyway, you must be so happy. We're back he to was our in old jail. routine. <laughs> <laughs> when he did come home that day, I was upstairs. I heard the door and then his voice, I'm home. My heart just sank, and I wished he had died. They found a lump under my arm. Oh, my God. They biopsied it. I get the results in a couple of days. Hasn't asked me how I am. Touch my face or something when he comes in. I get it. Your kids are grown. And your husband's going to get killed at some point in the near future anyway. Look at this place. The mother country. Hey, here they make a real. Yeah, here's an Ofurio Junta. Oh, hey, how are you? Be a charity. Too much kissing. I mean, I'm sure he's a nice guy and everything, but Vittorio will be there, right? Maybe not. Commendatore. We can't tell because it's been mostly interiors and street shots. I can't really tell if this is on location or not. If they went to Italy. Usually, if you're shooting on location, you kind of show off some of the exteriors. And Nino says we always ask your uncle for more cars, but he was no supply. That's why I'm here. I'm about to die, Godfather. Oh, my church charger. Is that the car? Yeah. So those were Tony's guys that were stealing. In Eastern Europe, you can sell this car for 110, 120 thousand. My price to you, 90 grand. Don Vittorio. It's an honor. My name is Annalisa. I am his daughter. Piacere. Piacere. Tony. And is Christopher going to get high with this guy? Yes, he is. Well, now I should be talking to Mano Zucca. Mano Zucca is serving the life sentence. Can I just get some macaroni and gravy? <laughs> I will talk and decide to the ear of Annalisa. Is she the one actually in charge? Uh, no, no, per carità, anzi, you should have been guest to our house, but with my father condition. Uh... Yeah. Oh, come on! Yes, the kid only got firecrackers on it. I like how everybody jumped out like they're getting shot at, but Tony and Polly knew immediately, like, they weren't scared, they knew it was fireworks. You're done. Because they're not even sleeping in the same bed. Tony wants us to hang with Nino, work out the dock facilities. I hope we get some spare time. This sounds a lot like the music from The Godfather. It may even be. Okay, now we're definitely on location. This is beautiful. Do you remember Angie Bompensero? Angie Belfiore married Sal Bompensero. Right. She's thinking of divorcing him. Man, these are just gossips. Madonna whore is a full equation, I believe. Clothes and appliances and houses. I mean, she's not wrong. It's a weird thing to say. That the woman of your intelligence is content to ask so little from life and from herself. Well, you can introduce me to the boss. You can talk to me. But our men are in love to their mamas, huh? So, being a woman is not, um, uh, come as it is, um, comes natural, huh? That's an interesting take. I really like that. Why do you save your toenail clippings? I was wondering what that was. Right. I didn't quite catch what she picked up there. You want them? If your enemy comes into possession of your nail or your hair clippings, they can make the evil on you. Bonjour. Okay, so Polly's not really one for travel. So you enabled, guys. 
Well, you get an obvious advantage to having your guys in that end. How much you pay me for this man? I pay you. What are you thinking? Fool you to start. Fool you? Fool! But you should have shaved! I'm going to give you one of my best men, and all I get is a bunch of numbers in the air. Ma vera viva! I thought it was pretty clear early on that she was the one actually in charge. Tony's really struggling with that concept. I just came from the doctor's office. Yeah? The biopsy came back negative. Yeah, good. Good. I'll be back later. Oh my god, you suck so bad. Pretend you care. Divorce him. Divorce him now. The 332 to Mount Vesuvius is now leaving at the side entrance. So is Christopher going to miss the whole trip because he's just going to be high the whole time? Don't leave the guy alone. Come on, it's on the boil. <clears throat> what are you doing? <clears throat> yeah. You take good care of your father. What are you going to do? Send him to a spitz? <laughs> That's funny. Yes. Tony almost threw a pillow over his mother's face. <laughs> so what did the lawyer say today? He said I have a good case and we'll file on Tuesday. This very morning, God gave me a gift. And I will use that gift. Mm, you know what the church says about divorce. Oh, please. Let the Pope live with him. What does the church say about gossiping? Because you're going to tell everybody as soon as this conversation's over. Is this, this is really the example you want to set when your daughter is struggling very hard to keep her new marriage in one piece? Trying to convince herself to stay with Tony, isn't she? In the end, I know you're not going to leave him. <laughs> I know you won't do that. So what we're hearing here is Carmelo's never going to leave Tony no matter what. Godfather 2 shot for sure right there. That was the Fredo death shot. I gotta hand it to you. Great fruit you got here. Great scene, and I can't show anything on YouTube with all the nudity. <laughs> the rulers would come from across the ancient world to hear the Sibyl's predictions of their future. She would sit inside the cave inhaling gases. Well, I, I like the touches of the graffiti and all I call the garbage in here from people who don't treat this with respect. It's life? like touring in America. <laughs> You're no problem, Turin. You are your own worst enemy. Everybody's their own worst enemy, so maybe your psychic power has been overrated a little bit. You give me Furio, and I'll walk down the price of the cars to 85. The brand of the car from 90 to 85, and she gets, then he gets one of her best guys? 75,000. There, that's negotiation, yeah. Fabulous. I felt right at home. It's great. They're real good business wise. It's not true. I feel sorry for anyone who hasn't been. He's on a duty free buying a gift for eight. Four days. He's a block away from the greatest shopping district in the world. What's the matter, Tony? Nothing. Hey, come on! Yeah, he never left the hotel room. That's why he didn't go shopping. I wonder why he is so agitated right now. And why Polly's lying about how great a time he had. Honestly, guys, I don't know what this song is about. I, I, I feel like thematically it's really significant for what's going on with Carmela here. I'm looking it up as soon as the episode's over, or let me know. Okay, uh, good balance there on the home. And he just walks in after uh, Polly's wife. No, I'm sorry, not Polly. Sal's wife said, like, he just comes in like nothing happened, and he doesn't really seem to care. You know, he doesn't, and I feel like that's, you know, there, like I said, there's a lot of projection there. Um, Carmela telling telling Sal's wife, you're, you're, you're not going to leave him. I just know you don't, you won't. Um, it's against the church. It's not good for your kids, no matter how old they are. He set a bad example. She's giving a lot of reasons, and I, I think... You know, the the scene with Janice kind of let her know that, like, you you two are the, you know, the, the Janice scene was great because it's like, you're two basically the same person. You're in the same situation. And when Janice was kind of taking shots, and I, I believe her when she said, I'm not talking about you. I don't know. Maybe I am because you're basically the same kind of, you're basically living the same life. Um, usually Janice says things and I, I kind of wish she wouldn't, but, but I feel like 
there was a bit of a breakthrough there um, with her. So when when Sal's wife's like, "Who are you trying to convince?" You know, well, I'm just what you know. Why why are you pushing this so hard? Well, because she's trying to convince herself that that she can never leave Tony. Um, and honestly, I don't think she will. Um, I, you know, we're in season two of like a seven season show. Of course, it it, it can happen, but I I don't know. I don't I don't feel like we get to that point with Carmilla. I mean, maybe she gets close, um, but I don't see them not being together. I'm not I, I'm not sure I see. A, a world where Tony accepts that uh, as a as a possibility as a as a reality. Um, also, uh, to change gears here before before we go, um, the opening scene with the family getting carjacked. I really really like that a lot that they put it there. Um, one of the critiques, um, Breaking Bad was one of my favorite shows. Um, still is. Um, I love Breaking Bad. Um, but one of one of my very small critiques of the show was it never really showed the consequences or not much. It, they did a little bit, you know, the the the, the people that you know the, the ATM episode, if you know what I'm talking about. For those of you who know, but I don't, I don't feel like the show did enough to show the the, the, the consequences of all of this all of these drugs. You know, we we, you know, we we manufacture drugs, we get money, right? Lots and lots and lots of money, millions and millions and millions of dollars. But we don't really see the consequence on the streets not much of it anyway, of the people that get hooked on it, the people who suffer, the, the people who pay the, the people who actually are paying the co- the, the price and you know, actually um, suffering the consequences, right? Kind of like the, the opioid crisis, the people who actually are suffering um, for, from from what the, the decision makers are doing, right? And I love the fact that at the beginning of this episode, you know, yeah, we're talking business. We're talking how much do we sell these stolen cars for? What a great deal. What great business. But I'm glad at the beginning we got to see that there is actually a, a cost on people for these 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 crimes are being committed. These aren't victimless crimes. It's not cool to be a, a, a mobster because you're victimizing people. And I, I love the fact that that's how we started the episode. We showed this family get carjacked and and you know a gun in their face and they're and that they, they're not only robbed but they're terrorized and their dog runs away. And it's like you know these little things, you know these 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 squabbles. You know, Tony's going to make, what, say $75,000, we are going to double, so he's making like $35,000 plus, $37,000 on one of these cars. This family got utterly terrorized and destroyed over thirty-five, you know, $35,000 for him, a car that they bought for $120,000, um, I'm guessing. Um, I don't know how much the car was. He said they can sell it for one twenty, but but regardless, I'm, I'm really glad that, that, that they took some of the romance out of the, the mob life by, by showing out at the beginning. You do all these, these, these criminal things. We have all these criminals. Yeah, people get hurt. Yeah, people get killed. Yeah, people get arrested on the show. There are consequences, but they're doing them to each other. And the, the, the average person on the street that's the actual victim of the crime, um, I'm, I'm glad we're not just pretending they don't exist, right? There's, there, there's, there's an actual real-world cost to, to this lifestyle, and I'm really glad they showed that. I don't know, but I, I know it was like a two-minute scene, but I, it, it really stuck with me when they were haggling back and forth throughout the episode about what their deal was going to be, how much for the cars, and, and what are we going to trade, and what are we, how, how are we going to come to some agreement, and is this a good deal or a bad deal, and, 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 and all of the little stuff with it that the, the show didn't hide from the fact that these people are ultimately monsters doing bad things. Um, so. Good on you, HBO and David Chase and everyone working on the show. This was this was really, really a strong episode. All right. Catch you on the next one, guys.